Hello, welcome to another episode of Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This series is following our tiny house project from the early stages through to completion and beyond. This is part two of our electrical rough-in. So we've got all the wiring roughed in, uh, pulled to all the locations, made sure that uh, everything is picked up on a circuit and that there's the right wiring to it, and double checked it. And it's always good to make sure that we're 100% before going ahead and terminating or splicing anything. Because if you've gone and spliced stuff and then you need to add something later, you're like gonna have to undo the splice to add the thing and it just adds a bunch of work. So doing all one step and then moving on to the next one is always the best. So I'm gonna start by showing a, um, an example of the simplest type of thing to terminate, which is when you've got one wire coming into a box that's gonna have a single plug in it. I mentioned before how I like to leave a little bit of a loop so that we could always pull a little bit of wire into the box if something got damaged. So I've got my little S here, and then I just line it up with where it's gonna enter into the box, which is about there, and then I'm going to strip the outer jacket off from here. So I've got these uh, strippers that actually have a hole that will do the outer jacket, and they're really uh, fresh and sharp, so I'm just gonna score it a bit, and then I actually have a knife that uh, has a very dull tip, and then sharp further down, so I can just dig it in to the uh, into the outer jacket like that, and then basically strip uh, strip along the center of the wire, and then I can just pull it apart where I made that score and pull it off. And it'll break nice and clean. This is a vapor tight box, so it's got this weather stripping on the outside and uh, covering the holes where you're going to enter the wire. So you just need to puncture the foam. So I'm just gonna poke the uh, tips of the wires through and just feed it in. And some people like to um, put the wire in before they strip the outer jacket um, because this can be a bit cumbersome when you've got these uh, wires kind of flailing all over the place. But I like to do it this way because I find it more difficult to reach in and get a nice uh, cut to strip the wire down um, nice and deep where it enters the box. The way I've got it will look like this. So now that we got all the wires uh, loose in the box, the bare bond needs to go under one of the green bonding screws to make sure that the whole uh, the metal strip in here and then anything touching it like the, the strap for the plug or switch is bonded. So I'm gonna wrap that around clockwise so that when it's tightened, it uh, will uh, tend to bite harder and not come apart. And then I'm gonna fold the uh, bond down into the bottom right and then give a little loop, but then also fold the neutral down in that direction and then opposite with the hot conductor like that. And then keeping them tight in the corners, what I like to do is grab it and then the amount that uh, is in my hand is a good indicator of how much I want inside the box. So I'll cut off the rest. By code, you need at least six inches uh, left inside the box when you're all done. And this is more than enough. But it's also just the right amount so that it can be folded twice like this and there's enough room in the height of the box to do that. And then you end up with that. I've split up the neutral and bond and the hot because of the way the plug's gonna go on. Uh, pretty much every plug where we are is oriented this way and that's the way I've installed pretty much every plug I've ever installed. But I actually prefer the idea of having them this way. And since this is our own house, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And that's why I've got the neutral and bond on the right, because that's where the screw terminals are for the plug, and then the hot on the left. Most of the time I would do this reversed to do a plug this way, but uh, I'm gonna leave all of our boxes prepared this way to uh, accommodate this orientation. 
This is going to be a dedicated plug for our toaster oven, which will be the tiny house's oven. It's 12 gauge wire, so it's just a little bit bigger, uh, but it's pretty much identical to the single plug we just did. The only difference is that I'm going to have to identify the neutral. I've got the wire stripped and ready to enter, but I'm going to wrap this red wire in white tape uh, entirely all the way to uh, where I've got it stripped to make it clear that it's the neutral and nothing else. And I talked about this before when I did the outside plug and uh, all the reasons behind it. With the neutral made white, there's no mistaking that that's the neutral. It doesn't look any different than any other box. And I've been uh, putting hooks in the neutral and the bond just to take another step out of the finishing process. But it's generally good practice to leave the hot unstripped or even capped off because if you end up energizing a circuit where you're missing a device somewhere, that box could then have a bare hot and that can be dangerous. One notch up in complexity would be bringing two circuits to a single box. This is where our fridge is going to go and we might have a separate uh, freezer. So we're going to have a split plug where we've got two circuits, one for each part of the plug, so that we could potentially have the fridge and freezer on their own circuits and so that they're never fighting for power. So this is a three wire cable and I'm going to strip it entirely with my knife. So I'm going to figure out roughly where I want it to go into the box. And then I like to just just shave a tiny bit off of the, uh, the cable, <laughs> being very careful here, but uh, get enough so that I can dig the, uh, the dull part of the, the hooked knife in and then basically just drag it down the cable, uh, slicing it off all the way down like so. It's very easy to nick the wires and you definitely wouldn't want to have a uh, nicked hot wire in there. I scored the outer jacket here so that it would break nice and clean, but I was very gentle to make sure I wasn't actually penetrating through the outer jacket and nicking the inner wire. And likewise, when I dragged my knife to slice it, only the, uh, the dull tip here was actually sliding along the uh, inner insulation here. So I know that it's all good all the way down. It's really important to note that the only reason we can bring in two circuits like this on a single cable is because we have both legs of a 240 volt system feeding our panel. If we were fed by just a regular 120 volt extension cord, we couldn't do this because um, what could end up happening is that the neutral, if we had two circuits like this, the neutral could end up carrying twice as much current back as it's supposed to. But without getting into a whole bunch of theory, uh, the short version is that because we have both legs, uh, we have to make sure at the panel that these two circuits are on opposite legs and the way electricity works is that it uh, alternates constantly so the neutral is only ever carrying one at a time and it's going to be safe this way. Other than that, it's just like any other plug except that we've got two hots that we're going to split across uh, the two halves of the receptacle. Here's an example of a box that's just a straight splice through. There's three two wire cables coming in and it's just color to color and everything's a nice length so that it can be uh, tucked neatly away. And we were gonna have a plug here, but ended up switching out for a 12 volt thing. So uh, to accommodate the cabling we'd already pulled, we just put in a box to uh, splice everything straight through. Here's a plug box that's got two uh, two wires coming to it. And that's because we got the supply power and then we got more plugs downrange. So these need to connect to each other but also have provisions to uh, connect to the plug that's going to be here. So I'll get these wires in and then show you how we do that. All right, we've got it to the same step as any other box with it bonded and the wires grouped together. And you may have noticed how much extra cabling was dangling here uh, from when we pulled the wiring. 
and I haven't cut any of that off yet. Uh, entered all the uh, <laughs> extra stuff here, and the reason for that is we're gonna need to splice these together, but um, we're gonna need to also leave little pigtails to connect to the plug that's gonna be here, and when we trim this down, the excess here can be used to make those pigtails. With the pigtails spliced on, now we can fold it all up and trim the pigtails down just the right amount as well to fold nicely into the box, making good use of the space. This is the only regular light switch we have in the whole house. Everything is going to be LED lights, but we do have one box for a fixture uh, in the kitchen in case the under cabinet lights aren't enough to work with. You'll notice that there's only one two wire cable coming into this box instead of one cable coming in as the source of power and then one cable going up to the light. And that's because what we've got going on here is the uh, source cable coming into the light box. The white from that cable is the neutral for the light fixture there but the black ties onto the white of this cable, essentially sending the power down to here. This connects to the switch here, and when you switch it, it sends the power back up on the black, which is what we connect to the light up there. So the simple way of thinking of that is we're just sending the power through that light box down to here, you switch it, and then that sends the power back up to the light to complete the switching. I've talked before about the importance of identifying the neutral, and this is one exception where it's okay to have a white wire that's hot. It's because it's in a switch box with only one cable. It's clear what it's for. So in this case, it's allowed and you don't need to do any special identifying of the colors. And one last detail about this is that even though this bond wire is being used for nothing other than uh, down on the screw terminal to bond this box, we still need to leave uh, the full workable length in here. So this is just gonna get tucked away inside, but the length is maintained. We're giving ourselves lots of kitchen counter plugs. In addition to the one that we have dedicated for where we plan to plug in our induction cooktop, we've got three more. Uh, there's one downrange there and there'll be two here. And we're gonna split those over two circuits. So one circuit will have a dedicated one here and the other circuit will have one here plus the one that's downrange. So we've labeled the incoming circuits times one and times two to indicate how this is to be wired. And a couple details about this are that because you're never very far from the sink in the kitchen, every plug is gonna need ground fault circuit interruption protection, GFCI. So you can get GFCI plugs to do that protection on the spot, uh, but those are very big and bulky. So when I'm entering the cables and dressing, them, uh, dressing the wires in here, I need to make the most use of the space uh, so that I'm not running out of space when I go put the plugs in. The trade-off though is that they, these plugs have the ability to protect a regular plug downrange and the way that you wire them is such that you don't need pigtails. So that's going to eliminate a, a splice and some bulk in here. Um, we'll get into that later when we put the plugs in, but all this is important to know uh, during this step when we're entering and doing the splicing with the wires here.
The one splice we do need to make in this box is for bonding pigtails. Each receptacle will need its own little bonding uh, wire connection. And a good way to do that is I've got everything out of the way. I've got the pigtails on there. I've got a really nice long one, as you'll see why. I'm gonna fold this as neatly as I can into the back. Uh, and then I'm gonna leave one here for this plug. And then I'm gonna tuck the other one way in the back down over to where the other plug is going to go. And then I can bring down and tuck all the rest of the wiring into place, like so. And then I'll be able to fold all of this up. And when I come back to put the plugs on, I've got the right uh, wires in the right spots to fit onto the plugs optimally so that it will fold in and again make best use of this space especially because we got a lot going on here and we're gonna have big plugs going into that box. I'm gonna remember which wire is what in here just because I'm familiar with it but if there's any doubt it's always good to make a little uh, note with some sharpie inside the box keeping in mind that if I were to make any marks or had labels on the wires here on the outside that I'm not gonna be able to see that when I come to do the plugs after the walls are uh, all closed in. So here's a case where we're gonna have two dedicated plugs, meaning each plug has its own circuit. But instead of bringing a two wire to each box separately, we're bringing in two circuits into the first box, dropping one off, and then splicing through with the other circuit to the other box. So we started the same way we did with the fridge and freezer plug by bringing a three wire in to bring the two circuits in. And then it's basically the same as if we were bringing a circuit in, splicing to a plug and then carrying on, where we spliced the bond and put a pigtail for the plug here. Same thing with the neutral. But then because we've got two circuits here, we're just gonna use one of those to be the third um, wire for the plug, the hot. And then the other circuit from that three wire just splices straight through and this is gonna get tucked away in the back of the box because that goes to the other plug. So this is for the plug that's here and then this is what is carrying on that second circuit through to the other plug. Here's a spot where there's gonna be two regular plugs all on the same circuit. No GFIs, no special splicing or anything. There's three cables coming in, so they're all just gonna get spliced together in their groups, white, black, and uh, bond. And each of those groups will need two pigtails coming off of it, one for each plug. This is above where the TV is going to be, which is also going to be my standing workstation. And we're planning on putting kind of like a shelf thing here and having space to put things up here. So we're putting all these plugs so that we can put uh, like battery chargers for our camera. I'll have like a USB um, external hard drive and any other things that might need charging. We can plug them into these plugs and keep them tucked away. And so we're splicing these up and they're just the same as any other plug where we got power coming in and then carrying on. They're all in a big long chain here. If you want to see some of our previous videos, click on the preview tiles and subscribe if you want to follow our progress. You can also visit our website here. Mm -hmm.